On a rainy evening, Adele returned home after a month-long vacation abroad. She lived alone and her mother had been watching her cats. The girl walked into the house, turned on the lights, and looked around. After that, she oh, immediately no. called the police. Why? Look, there are wet footprints in the corridor. They're wet, so it means they're still fresh, and they don't belong to Adele because she just walked in. There's someone in her house. Keep your brain working, because here's another one. Mrs. Carpenter has three daughters, Ava, Jane, and Mia. Ava is now twice as old as Jane will be when Mia turns as old as Ava is now. Who is the oldest daughter, and who is the youngest? Let's rephrase it. Sometime in the future, Mia will be as old as Ava is now, and Jane will be half that age. So, obviously, Ava is the oldest and Jane is the youngest. Mrs. Brown is a landlady of an apartment building with a no-pet policy. Not even fish are allowed. One night, she heard a cat meowing. The sound was coming from the floor above. The next day, she inspected two apartments. In which apartment does the cat live? Look, there's a cat's house in the corner of this apartment. The cat must live there. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. After wandering around for a while, she found a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch was busy with potions, but she agreed to help Esme if the girl helped her first. There were four ingredients which needed for the potion. A few bugs, a secret herb, some magic powder, and dried mushrooms. The witch didn't remember in what order she needed to add the ingredients, but she remembered this. What's the correct order? There are four ingredients. If the powder is added before at least two of them, it means that it's added either the first or second. But since mushrooms should go before the powder, then they're added first, followed by the magic powder. Then there should be the bugs. And the secret herb comes last. Now, I have a very special mission for you. There's a robber who steals famous paintings from galleries across the globe. The police all over the world have been looking for the paintings, which the robber hides in different places. The police have managed to find the first secret place. Each painting is stored in a chest with its replica generated by AI. You can only take out one painting, and after you take it out, the chest will blow up together with the remaining painting. So, you have to choose carefully and recognize the original work of art at first glance. Here's the first chest. It stores The Scream by Edward Munch, and it's a replica. Which one is the original? This is the original. Now it's The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Can you recognize the original? It's this one. Did you get it right? In the next chest, you'll find the famous Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci. You will probably recognize this one easily but the replica is very realistic, so keep your eyes wide open. Yes, this is the one and only Mona Lisa. It goes back to the Louvre now. In the fourth chest, there's another famous artwork by Vincent van Gogh, Cafe Terrace at Night. Can you spot the original one? Here's the original. Have you saved the correct one? And now it's time for the last painting in the discovered batch. 
It's The Old Fisherman, a painting by a Hungarian artist. Which painting should we save? This is the one. Congratulations Yahoo! and thank you for your help. We'll let you know if other paintings are found. A detective went on vacation to Spain, but at night, someone broke into his neighbor's hotel room and stole all her valuables. In the morning, the detective analyzed the camera footage and came up with three suspects. They all agreed to answer some questions. Jack said, I arrived late in the evening and I was sleeping the whole night. Allison said, I went out at night. I came to my room only a couple of hours ago. Robert said, I don't know this woman. I didn't rob her. Who should the detective arrest? Arrest Jack. He said he arrived late in the evening. But then, when did he get sunburned? There's no sun in the evening. He must have spent more time in the hotel than he claimed. Eliza went for a walk in a dark forest, and she found an old mansion. Of course, she went there to see what was inside. As soon as she entered, the door behind her back got locked. It was a magic house. There were three exits, but each of them seemed dangerous. Behind the first door, there was a laser with a motion sensor. Behind the second door, the floor was made of lava that burned anything that touched it. Behind the third door, there was a huge herbivore dinosaur. Which way should Eliza choose to get out safely? Eliza should pick the last entrance. Firstly, dinos are extinct. But even if there actually was one, a herbivore dino would only eat plants. It wouldn't be interested in a human. Hannah was chilling at home, drinking tea and reading, when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door, and there was a stranger there. Oh, sorry, I must have confused the floors. I've just moved in. Sorry for disturbing you. When the guy left, Hannah called the police because she didn't believe it was just a mistake. Why was he so suspicious? The problem was that the guy knocked. If he had really thought it was his apartment, he'd have tried to open the door with his keys. Good news, police have discovered another batch of stolen paintings. Just like the previous one, they are stored in chests. Each has a replica and only one can be saved. Are you ready to save some art? Here's the first one, American Gothic, painted by Grant Wood. Where is the original one? Here it is. Did you recognize it? Okay, the second chest. And that's Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. Can you spot the original girl? Here she is. We all know the next one, The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. It was stolen from the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and we have to return it. But which one? This is a replica, and this is the original. Did you save the right one? Just two more left, so stay alert. In the fourth chest, we have The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. As always, you should decide which of the two is the original. So, what's your call? Of course, this is the one. And it's time to save the last painting, The Mysterious Black Square by Kazimir Malevich. Can you find the original one? It wasn't easy, but this is the one you need. One day, Amy decided to explore an abandoned house in her neighborhood. She went inside by herself. The place was eerie and strange. 
She started by exploring the garden, but got distracted looking at some flowers and suddenly fell into a 20-foot deep pool. The pool was empty, but when she fell inside, she activated a sensor that said the pool would be filled with water in only five minutes. Amy was scared because she was a bad swimmer. She looked around and noticed a six-foot-long rope lying at the bottom of the pool. She also saw a four-foot-wide wooden barrel and a three-foot-tall metal safe. Amy was six feet tall, and she managed to get out of the pool safely. Can you guess how she did it? Well, once the water started rising, Amy held tight to the wooden barrel. It helped her stay afloat and get out of the pool safe and sound. She could only enter the house through a door with a five-digit combination lock. Amy looked around for some clues and found a piece of paper with five digits, 81169. She tried this code, but it didn't work. Soon, she realized what was wrong. Can you figure it out as well? She was holding the paper upside down. The correct code is 69118. Finally, she got inside the main house. In the living room, she discovered that the mansion was not abandoned after all. There were four ladies waiting for her. Each of them offered to guide Amy around the house. Which woman do you think is the safest choice? Well, the first woman doesn't cast a shadow, so she's probably a vampire. The third woman has a vampire bite on her neck, which means she's going to turn into a vampire pretty soon. The fourth lady has snakes in her hair, which means a big no-no. So Amy is left with lady number two as her guide. The lady led Amy to another room. She gave the girl a chocolate bar and told her she had a challenge for her. The guide was going to perform a few tricks for Amy, and after each trick, she needed to give the guide one-seventh of the chocolate bar. But Amy was only allowed to cut the bar into two parts. It was also impossible to break the bar or cut it without a special knife. In this case, what is the best strategy for cutting the chocolate bar? Amy should make two cuts, dividing the bar into three pieces. The first piece should be one-seventh of the bar, the second piece two-sevenths of the bar, and the third one four-sevenths of the bar. The guide performed a crazy magic trick, and Amy gave her one-seventh of the bar. After the second trick, she gave the lady two-seventh of the bar and asked her to give the one-seventh piece back. After the third trick, she gave the guide the smallest piece again. Then, after the fourth trick, Amy took away the first two pieces and gave the woman the four-seventh piece. After the fifth trick, she added the one-seventh piece again. After the sixth trick, the girl took away the one-seventh piece and gave the guide the two-seventh piece. And after the grand finale, she gave the woman the smallest part of the bar again. After she finished performing tricks, the lady locked Amy inside the room. In a bizarre twist, the door she had entered through disappeared, and the girl could only see another door in the corner of the room. That door was sealed with a letter combination lock. Amy looked around the room and found a slip of paper. That's what was written on it. P plus 3, N minus 1, B minus 1, N plus 4, S plus 1. What's the code word? The code word is SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. P plus the following three letters is S. N minus one letter is M, and so on. Amy left this room and found a staircase leading to the basement. She went down and saw that her guide was downstairs waiting for her. The guide told her she needed to choose between the three drinks on the table in front of them. Only one of the drinks was not poisoned. The drinks were tea with sugar, cappuccino, and hot chocolate. What should Amy pick? If it was indeed sugar in the tea, it would have already melted completely, but the sugar cubes are still in there. The foam on top of the cappuccino looks suspiciously green. It's probably unsafe to drink it. So, Amy should opt for the hot chocolate. The guide opened the back door of the house and told her to leave and never come back. 
Amy found herself in the street and saw a car standing nearby with its engine already running. She got inside and decided to drive back to her house. However, it was so foggy that she got lost and ended up in a deserted town. By then, she was hungry, thirsty, and really tired. Suddenly, Amy saw three doors leading to different houses. It was written that behind the first door, there was loads of food. Behind the second door, there was all the water she could drink. And behind the third door, there was a stash of a million dollars. Which door should Amy open first? Well, the car door. Duh! Amy managed to find her way back to her hometown and arrived home in the early morning. As soon as she entered her house, she noticed her laptop was missing. It looked like someone had broken into her house because there were footprints on the floor leading to the living room window. Amy called the police and told them about the case. In a day's time, the detective gathered four possible suspects. The first person was Jack, Amy's childhood friend. He said he hadn't left his house over the past few days because he'd been working on an important project for his work. Then there was Robert, Amy's next-door neighbor. He said he'd been taking care of his garden the entire week, but he hadn't seen anyone break into Amy's place. Mallory, Amy's co-worker, said she'd been away on vacation during the past week. And Susanna, Amy's housekeeper, said that last time she'd come to clean Amy's place, the laptop had still been there. The detective knew immediately who had done it. How could he tell? Look at Robert's garden. He said he'd been taking care of it, but the flowers are all withered and dry. Amy's friend Bill called her saying that he had a surprise for her. He said he'd won several tickets to the concert of Amy's favorite pop band. He would give her a ticket if she figured out the answer to a very difficult riddle. Amy managed to crack the riddle and got the ticket. The riddle went like this. You don't have them when you're born, but you get them later. In several years, you don't have them anymore. But then, they come again, in a different form. Many years later, they might leave you again. What are they? They are your teeth. Look at these two people. Can you guess which one of them is just dressed up and is not a woman in reality? It's this one here, the one in the pink dress. Look closer. She's blonde, but has dark hair on her arms. Also, you can see some naturally dark hair slipping under the wig. Okay, let's try to find some more imposters. There are two pregnant women. Can you tell which one isn't really pregnant? It must be this one. She has a big belly. But her choice of high heels is very questionable. Look at these two. One of them is a mummy that escaped from ancient Egypt. Don't ask me how. It doesn't really matter. Just find the mummy. What's your choice? It's this one. Look at the ankle. There's a piece of bandage slipping out of the pants. Dira came to a hospital for an x-ray. Two doctors are ready to accept her, but one of them isn't a real doctor. Take a close look at them. Who's not a real doctor here? It's this man here. See, he looks nothing like the person in the photo on his badge. He must have stolen the uniform. Mrs. Cook left for a business trip, and three of her daughters stayed at home by themselves. When Mrs. Cook returned the next day, she found her car crashed. Obviously, one of her daughters had taken it and had crashed it by accident, but none of the three took the blame. Sage said that she hadn't left the house. Leora said that her friend had picked her up for school that day. Amaya said that she had taken the bus. Who crashed the car? Look inside the car. There's a purse. If you were attentive, 
you could have noticed that the day Mrs. Cook left, Amaya had this purse. So it was her who had crashed the car. Naya woke up on a Saturday morning after a long and hard week. She was very hungry, so she decided to make herself breakfast. Naya had a dozen eggs. She broke three eggs, fried three, and ate three. How many eggs are left? There are nine eggs left. Naya broke, fried, and ate the exact same three eggs. Esma was walking through the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she found a witch's house. She walked in, pet a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was making a new potion and asked Esma to give her a plant from the shelf. Esma walked there, but there were five of them. Which one? she asked. Not the one right in the middle, and not the smallest one. Also, don't take the one that's next to the pink flower. So, which one does she need? That's the one on the very left then, or the pink flower itself. But in that case, wouldn't the witch just say so? Probably. She seems satisfied, so Esma is going back home this time. Mova was in a local park and noticed a purse. Someone must have forgotten it, so she took it to Lost and Found. They accepted it and said they would give it back to the owner. At the end of the day, three women came in and demanded the purse back, each stating that the purse belonged to them. Take a look inside the purse and decide to whom it really belongs. Look, there's lipstick in the purse. There's just one woman who's wearing lipstick of the same color, and it's this one. So the purse must belong to her. Let's stick around in Lost and Found for a while. There are more things to give back to their owners, like this wallet, for example. There are three people claiming that it belongs to them, but which one is the real owner? Look, there's an ID card. It has a photo of this guy, so it must be his wallet. There's a backpack, and three people are demanding it. You can take a look inside. Who do you think the backpack belongs to? There's a jacket that matches this girl's trainers perfectly. It must belong to her. Can you pick the owner of this purse out of these three people? Look, there's a charm on the purse that says Ella. This girl in the middle has a necklace with a pendant saying Ella too. It must be her purse. Yvonne and Liana are exploring a forest right outside their town and find an abandoned hotel. Of course, they walk in to look around. When they walk into one of the rooms, a cage falls and traps them inside. There are three potions. Each of them will only last 10 minutes. If they drink the purple one, they will turn into the first animal they can see. If they drink the blue one, they'll be able to fly. If they drink the orange one, they'll switch bodies with each other. Which potion should they drink? Look, there's a little mouse in the room. If they drink the purple potion, they can turn into a mouse and will be small enough to escape through the cage. What they do afterward is another matter. Inez was studying in a boarding school. She often stayed in the library till late because, well, she didn't want to spend time with her roommates. One day, she found a dungeon. Of course, she walked in to see what was there. She found a pile of old books and a journal filled with weird symbols. Can you help her decode the name of the person this journal belongs to? For each letter, there's a unique border and dot combination. To decode, Inez just has to find the respective letter. 
If she does it right, she should get the name Marion. Erica works at the Railway Security Service. This morning, she received an emergency alert. There's a person with fake documents trying to escape to Canada by train. Erica and her colleagues found three suspects who look almost the same. Can you identify a criminal just by looking at one's passport? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. So this documents are fake. Bob is a college teacher. He invited his worst student, Dan, for a conversation. Bob wants to test the guy's logical thinking. He says, If you tell a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell the truth, I'll still expel you. What should the student say to stay in college? Bob should say, I'm telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox uh -oh. because it cannot be a lie or the truth. Nancy has 10 bowling balls. Her brother Josh decided to check her intelligence. So, he asked Nancy to place those 10 balls in 5 lines, such that each of the lines has exactly 4 balls on them. Can you help her accomplish this task? She should draw a 5-point star and place the 10 balls occupying the corners and the intersection points. Voila! 5 lines with 4 balls in each row. Kevin has been hitchhiking in a desert for hours. Finally, one driver stopped and said, I will give you a ride wherever you want, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Which letter can make the road larger? Can you help Kevin solve this task? The letter B can turn road into broad. Alex is a shepherd. He had 30 sheep, out of which all but 13 ran away. Can you calculate how many sheep Alex has now? He has 13 sheep. The phrase all but 13 ran away actually means that all except the 13 escaped. Take a look at these three prisoners. The first guy pushes the iron bars. The second guy shakes muscles with dumbbells. The third guy sits and reads a book. There's a picture hanging on the wall. Can you say for sure who's likely to escape? Take a closer look at the third guy. Can you see the sand under the painting? He must be digging a tunnel and covering it with a picture. So he's the one who wants to escape. All Becky's shoes are black, except two. Also, all Becky's shoes are red, except two. And all Becky's shoes are yellow, except two. Can you calculate how many shoes Becky has in general? Just three, one of each color. Dr. Smith prescribed Dan expensive vitamins. He gave Dan two bottles labeled R and B. The pills are entirely identical. The doctor asked Dan to take one pill daily from the R bottle and one pill from the B bottle. He can't take more or less than that. One morning, Dan was taking out the pills. He took out one pill from the R bottle as usual and then, by mistake, he took out two from the B bottle. Now Dan has no idea which pill is which. He can't just throw away the expensive pills. What would you suggest? Dan should cut each of the three pills in half and put each half in two piles. Now each of the two piles will contain half of pill R and two halves of pill B. Now, Dan should take one more pill from the R bottle, cut it into half, and put the two halves in two different piles. This way, we'll know that each pile will have two halves of pill R and two halves of pill B. 
or one complete R pill and one complete B pill. Dan can take one pile today and keep the second pile for tomorrow. I am red, but I smell like blue paint. What am I? Red paint. Timmy's mother has three sons. She named her first son April. The next one's name is May. Can you guess the youngest son's name? And the correct answer is... Timmy. Pretty obvious, huh? Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? The reflection in the mirrors doesn't match reality. What about this picture? Can you see anything odd? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this guy's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had big scratches, unless they're a zombie. The king of octopuses has sons, who have six, seven, or eight legs. The one with seven legs always lies, but the one with either six or eight legs always tells the truth. On a certain night, four sons meet and chat. The blue octopus says, we have 28 legs altogether. The green one says, we have 27 legs altogether. The purple one says, we have 26 legs altogether. And the red octopus says, we have 25 legs altogether. Can you identify the color of the sun who's speaking the truth? The green sun is telling the truth. To prove it, let us first assume that one of them is telling the truth. Obviously, three of the four suns lie as they disagree with each other. Let's suppose that the blue octopus is telling the truth. In that case, he has either six or eight legs and each of the other octopuses is lying, which means they have seven legs. In this case, the total number of legs will be six plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 27 legs, or eight plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 29 legs. But the blue octopus said that they have 28 legs altogether. Therefore, he lies. Now we can follow the same logic and check the remaining three suns and we'll find out that only the green octopus is telling the truth. I have an eye, but cannot see. I'm faster than any man alive, but have no limbs. What am I? The correct answer is hurricane. I know a word of letters three. Add two and there will be fewer. Can you guess the word? The correct answer is few. I have a beard without being a man. I'm green, but I'm not a lizard. I'm white, but I'm not snow. Who am I? The correct answer is Leek. A wicked wizard has imprisoned Billy in his tower. Billy ran away from the wizard, but now he needs to choose between these three doors leading outside the tower. There's a toxic gas behind the first door. The second path is full of poisonous scorpions and snakes. And behind the third door, there's a pride of lions which haven't eaten for three years. Which way is the safest? The third one. The lions can't starve for three years and still be alive. Monica adores real estate. She used to spend $300,000 per house and acquired property worldwide. She realized that she had too many houses at one point. So, she started selling them at $30,000 per house. How is that possible if she was obviously losing money?
Before selling her property, Monica used to be a billionaire. Since she started losing money, she became only a millionaire. Anna runs a chocolate factory. She offers all her clients a special deal. Anyone can exchange five chocolate wrappers for one chocolate bar. Robert spent two weeks collecting the wrappers and managed to find 77. Yeah. Can you tell what maximum number of chocolates he can get from Anna? Robert can get a total of 19 chocolates. Here's how it works. First of all, 77 wrappers can be exchanged for 15 chocolates with two wrappers left. After unwrapping the new 15 chocolate bars, Robert will be able to exchange 15 wrappers for three more chocolates. Now he can use the remaining two wrappers and the new three wrappers to get one chocolate bar. 15 plus three plus one equals 19. Oh, yeah. Henry is an astronaut from Earth. He landed his spaceship on another planet in an unknown galaxy and began to explore the city and its citizens. Very soon, Henry felt a desperate need to go to the restroom, but when he saw these two doors leading to the ladies' and gentlemen's bathrooms, he got really confused. The problem is that Harry doesn't speak the local language, and he can't ask which door is for men and which is for women. Thankfully, he met a local guy, Mo, who could understand English. But he can speak only his native language. What two questions should Henry ask to figure out the right door? He should point at one of the doors and ask, is this the men's restroom? Then he needs to remember Mo's reply and ask, am I a man? If Mo says the same word, then the restroom Henry is pointing at must be for men. And if Mo says a different word, the restroom is for women. There were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy is still in the box. How can it be possible? It's pretty simple. The last person took a candy and the box. This way, one candy remained in the box. Hmm. On a cold night, four friends were roaming around the neighborhood. At one point, they tried to get under one umbrella, but the umbrella was too small. However, all four of them managed to stay dry. How can that be possible? It's possible because it wasn't raining. Meet Erica and Jim. Do you have any idea why he pushed her? Because they're shooting a movie. Do you see that cameraman reflected in the window? Billy organized a betting game for his friends. According to the rules, he will place two candies, one yellow and one red, in a dark box. If the player picks the red candy, they will get $5,000. But if they pick the yellow candy, they will have to pay $500. Unfortunately, Billy's a liar. He put two yellow candies in the box instead of one yellow and one red. Billy's friend, Wendy, watched the players losing the game one by one. But when it was Wendy's turn, she won $5,000. How did she do it? She picked a candy and, without showing it to anyone, ate it. Then she picked the remaining candy, which was yellow, and showed it to everyone. Billy had to admit that the first candy had been red. Otherwise, everyone would find out he was a liar. Nina went speed dating and met three handsome guys. The next day, each of the guys asked her out. Can you help Nina make the best choice? Brad didn't even ask the girl if she wanted to go to the restaurant or not. Besides, he's pretty rude and bossy. She barely knows Rob. It's not safe to go to his place alone, so Nina should choose David. He looks nice and polite. Hello. Amy has two strings. The only thing she can say for sure is that when you light one end of either string, it takes exactly one hour to burn. Can you help Amy measure 45 minutes with the help of the strings? Yeah. 
She should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will have burned completely. To measure the remaining 15 minutes, she should light the second end of the second string. When it's fully burned, we'll know for sure that 45 minutes have passed. Adam is a famous opera singer. He's going to perform for the king and queen for seven days in a row. In return for his work, they should pay him one-seventh of a gold bar per day. Adam doesn't accept prepayments. He requires a daily payment, which is one-seventh of a gold bar. What's the fewest number of cuts they should make to be able to pay Adam each day? Just two. Here's how it works. Day one, cut one-seventh of the gold bar and give it to Adam. Day two, cut two-sevenths of the gold bar and give this piece to Adam. He'll give you one-seventh of the bar back. Day three, give the singer the one-seventh piece you received the previous day. Day four, give Adam four-sevenths of the gold bar and he will give you the one-seventh and two-seventh pieces as change. Day five, give Adam the one-seventh part of the bar. Day 6. Give him the 2 7th piece and get the 1 7th one as change. And finally, Day 7. Give Adam his final 1 7th piece of the gold bar. Jenny and Sam arrived at a picturesque campground. They had to set up a tent. There were three good spots, in the forest, in the field, and near the lake. Which place should they opt for? The best option is to choose the field. Wild animals live in the forest. As for the lake, look, a zombie is hiding in the bushes over there. Probably not the best neighbor. George was walking down the street. Suddenly, a wizard popped out of nowhere and teleported George to his castle. He offered the guy to choose between these three doors. There's a hungry tiger behind the first door. There's an angry dinosaur behind the second door. And the room behind the third door is filled with toxic gas. Which door should George choose? The second one. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. After 30 weeks, the tree is completely covered with fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree needs to get half covered with oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks. Because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. In the ocean, there's an island. On the island, there's a house. In the middle of the house, there's a glass of water. Inside the glass of water, there's a coin. What's in the middle of the ocean? The correct answer is simple, the letter E. Harry went to a party. He liked these four ladies. He wanted to talk to one of them. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the first lady's hand. She's a zombie. The second lady has a vampire bite on her neck. She can turn into a vampire any minute and ruin the date. And the fourth lady is a ghost. So Harry should go and talk to the third lady. Hello. Julie worked in a Prada store in New York. Everything there was expensive and most clients paid by credit card. But one day, she got a client who got a purse, a wallet, and a dress. All that cost her $3,990. But the woman decided to pay in cash. Julie refused to sell the items to the client and called the police. Why? tried to use to pay. They are two $2,000 bills, which don't exist. The police of Atlanta were notified that a prisoner had escaped from Chicago and taken the plane to Atlanta. Of course, an officer was sent to the airport to find the prisoner and capture them. The police officer spotted three people who looked similar to the criminal. 
take a look at the passengers. Which one should be arrested? The prisoner must be this guy. He's the only one who doesn't have any luggage with him. Probably because he was running away and had none. In a small town, a grand robbery happened. Someone robbed a jewelry store in the local mall. At 6.03 p.m., the lights in the whole mall went off for 8 minutes. When the lights came back on, the most expensive jewelry pieces were missing from the shelves. The police interrogated three main suspects. Jack said, I was picking out a present for my son in an electronics store when the lights went off. I was so confused as anyone else. Fred said, I wasn't even in the mall at the time. I have no idea what you're talking about. And Stacy said, I was in the bathroom fixing my makeup. I didn't even notice the lights went out. Who is the main suspect? It's Stacy. She said that she hadn't noticed that the light had gone out, but they went off everywhere, including the bathrooms. She would have noticed it, so she's lying. Ava has always wanted to get a cat, but her mom wouldn't allow her to have a pet. So when one day she found a kitten on the street, she brought it home, but kept it a secret. She succeeded for two weeks, but one morning she went down to the kitchen. Have you been hiding a cat in your room? Her mother asked. How did she figure it out? Ava is wearing shorts. Her legs are all scratched, and these scratches are what gave her away. During Halloween, all kinds of creatures flooded a little town, blending in with the citizens. Weeks passed, but some of them stayed, pretending to be humans. The town's detective could catch the remaining ones. He's been tracking a vampire, and he has three suspects. All of them only come out at night. Which one of them is the vampire? This guy is pale, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a vampire. This guy is wearing a silver chain, so he can't be one. But this guy doesn't have a reflection. This is definitely not a human. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's ID cards and not let inside any suspicious people or people below the age of 21. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. Okay, here's the first guest for you. What can you say about this man? Don't let him in. The person in the photo is totally different. It's not this guy's ID card. Okay, here's the next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine. Let her in. Okay, the next one. Check it out and make your decision. In or out? Las Vegas is written with a W. It's a typo, which is unacceptable for official documents. This ID must be fake. Here's the next guest for you to examine. What's your verdict? Will you let her in? She seems fine to me. It must be safe to let her in. What about this girl? Is anything off here? She seems fine to me too. Green light. Okay, the last guest. In or out?
Look, the woman in the photo has a brown right eye and a green left eye. The real woman has a brown left eye and a green right eye. This is too suspicious. I wouldn't let her in. Amelia is a huge modern art enthusiast, and she wants to take her siblings to a new exhibition. A ticket for one person costs $18. A ticket for two costs $30. And a ticket for three costs $45. If she wants to pay as little as possible, should she invite her two siblings at once or go with each of them separately? It's cheaper if the three of them go together. It'll cost $45. If Amelia went with each of them separately, she would have to pay $30 twice, so she'd pay $60 in total. Ellery has a sweet tooth, and every Friday she goes candy shopping for the week. Tonight, she bought chocolate bars, jelly beans, and gummy bears. She has all chocolate bars but two, all packs of jelly beans but four, and all packs of gummy bears but four. How many pieces of each type of sweets did she buy? Chocolate bars are all but two, which means that there are two packs of jelly beans and gummy bears together. So there's one pack of jelly beans and one pack of gummy bears. Chocolate and gummy bears are four together, so there are three chocolate bars. Elu is a fairy living in her magical forest. Every day, she takes the same route for a morning flight to the lake. One Friday, she was flying to the lake when she met some other creatures moving towards her. There were two elves, three fairies, and a gnome. How many creatures were going to the lake that Friday morning? Just Elu. Everyone else was going in the opposite direction. Lily and Della are twin sisters. Both girls failed their history test at school, and their mother made them study all weekend. In the middle of the day, Mrs. McAdams came to check on the girls. Take a look at Lily and Della. Which of them hasn't been studying? Della, the book she's reading isn't a history book, it's physics. She must have grabbed the closest book as soon as she heard her mother's footsteps. A rich lady was booking into one of the best hotels in the city. When she got her key, she noticed that her bags had been stolen. The police interrogated three main suspects. Mr. Collins said, I wouldn't steal anything. I'm rich. I live in the penthouse on the 20th floor. Mrs. Jones said, I've just returned to the hotel. I've been out all day. And Mrs. Smith said, I wouldn't steal anything. I have too much stuff myself. Mr. Collins seems shady. He can't live on the 20th floor because there are only 18 floors in the hotel. Eddie and Lucy decided to go camping in the forest for the weekend. However, they didn't know that it was protected by an angry spirit who didn't like intruders. He appeared in front of them and said, You have set foot into my forest uninvited. You will not be able to leave. Forget your home. With it, you will never be reunited. We apologize. We didn't know the forest belonged to you. Please let us out. We won't ever come back. Lucy cried. The spirit replied, I'll show you mercy for you are sincere. Mysteries of my forest await you. Solve them all and you will be able to leave. Then he magically teleported them to the deepest, darkest part of the forest and vanished out of sight. As Eddie and Lucy walked around trying to find their way out of the forest, they came upon a river. They had to cross it to continue their journey. There were three different bridges in front of them. Which one should they choose to move to the other side? Do you see the weird river monster hiding under the stone bridge? It looks dangerous. And the wooden bridge looks so old, it can crash at any minute. 
so they should choose this one. After Eddie and Lucy crossed the bridge, they saw three different paths in front of them. The first road led to a cave where giant hungry trolls were living. The second road led to the house of evil witches who needed human blood for a spell they were casting that would allow them to stay young forever. And the third road led to a swamp where an eight-headed snake was waiting for its prey. Which path should they follow? They should choose the third road because if you look carefully, you can see that up ahead, the road is forked too. It means that there's a fourth path they can take if they continue walking on this one, and they won't end up in the swamp after all. When they arrived at the end of the fourth path, they saw a wizard's hut. They thought he might be able to help them, but the gate was locked. When they tried to force it open, a magical quill came flying towards them from one of the windows of the hut and started writing a riddle in the air. The only being who can let you in is my familiar Arthur the Owl. He must be sleeping on a tree at this hour. To convince him, you must bring him his favorite flower. Yet, if you cannot spot him in the next few seconds, I can't help you. And forever in this forest, you'll have to wander. Can you spot where the owl is? Look there. Eddie and Lucy managed to spot not one, but three owls standing on a tree branch. Only one of them was Arthur. If they don't figure out which one of them is Arthur, they won't be able to get help from the wizard. The first owl said, The third owl is not Arthur. The second owl said, I am not Arthur. And the third owl said, I am Arthur. However, only one of them was telling the truth, and the others were lying. Can you figure out which one is Arthur? If the first owl was Arthur, then both he and the second owl would be telling the truth. If the third owl was Arthur, then he and the first owl would be telling the truth. But only one of them is telling the truth, remember? So the second owl must be Arthur. Once Eddie and Lucy figured out which one was Arthur, the remaining owls flew away. Then Lucy asked him what his favorite flower was. Arthur answered with a riddle. I can grow very tall. I am of the color yellow. When I am young, I follow the closest star in the sky. Can you tell what flower I am? Arthur's favorite flower is the sunflower. Eddie and Lucy had to bring a sunflower to Arthur for him to let them in. They asked him where they could find one, and Arthur told them that they could get it from the sunflower field that was located between the cornfield and the wheat field. When they asked which direction they should go, Arthur said this. If you went east, took a right turn, covered some distance in that direction, then took a left turn, and finally took another left turn, which direction would you be facing? That's the direction you must go. Can you tell what direction that is? It's north. After Eddie and Lucy had walked for some time, an angry leprechaun jumped onto them out of nowhere and knocked them out with fairy dust. They opened their eyes in a prison cell. The leprechaun said, You stole my pot of gold and you're going to stay in this prison until you tell me where you hid it. Eddie said, We don't know anything about your gold. But the leprechaun didn't believe him. Suddenly, Lucy saw something strange that could help them. There was another prison cell in front of them with three different prisoners. Lucy noticed that one of them was going to try to escape. She suggested making a deal with the leprechaun. She said, I will tell you which prisoner is planning to escape if you let us go. He's probably the one who stole your gold, and I promise we'll help you find it once you free us. The leprechaun agreed to the terms. Take a look at these three prisoners. Can you tell who's trying to escape? It's the third prisoner. He has a map sticking out of his pocket. He must be up to something. The leprechaun took the map from that prisoner and let Lucy and Eddie go. He said, But now you have to help me find my pot of gold. Lucy noticed a couple of notes at the back of the escape map. The first one said, Find the pot of gold in the fields of gold. What do you think that means? Remember what Arthur said? He informed Lucy and Eddie about three different fields, sunflower, corn, and wheat. 
these three things are all yellow or golden, it could only mean that the leprechaun's pot of gold is in one of these fields. The road from the leprechaun's prison to the fields was foggy. They lost their way and arrived at part of the forest that even the leprechaun didn't even know about. Eddie immediately noticed three unusual things. Can you spot them? Even though it's still daytime, the place is dark. The mushrooms on the ground are actually tiny houses. And finally, one of the butterflies flying there in the distance is no butterfly at all. It's a fairy! As soon as Eddie spotted the fairy, it flew next to them and said, The fairy mother wanted me to bring everyone food, but when I asked what she wanted, she only said this. Remove the outside, cook the inside, eat the outside, and throw away the inside. What I want is what this is. But I don't know what that means. Can you help me, please? Do you know the answer? It's a corn on the cob. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.